What's up, Tyler? Winston, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good, brother. Um, doing good. So we got an interesting one today. Um, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk through it and um, you know discuss it. It's a little bit different. More on the industrial side. Sounds like my uh, my baby Bella's back there. She's mad that you're not, you're not holding into it. Yeah, she's mad that I'm not I'm not uh, out in the living room playing with her. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, uh, I'll let you go ahead and get started. Uh, kind of on the location sure. and kind of who we got who we're who we're underwriting today. Yeah, so we're underwriting. This is like a manufacturing distribution warehouse. Um. Easier. Um, this is so. This is this is uh, an industrial facility. Uh, the client is SRS Distribution. They're they're here. They're operating under a different name. I think it's Southern Shingles, but basically they have. Uh, I think they have over six hundred and sixty. Um, you know, they operate six hundred and sixty locations. This is, this is not like a a small operator. So yeah, yeah. Tom, I was doing a little bit of research, and so really interesting company. They're basically. A building supply company, right? And um, <clears throat> and they operate under a lot of different brands, uh, just providing building supplies. You know, a lot of roof material seems to be kind of their core. Um, you know, kind of their core uh, 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 competency here. So uh, it's a private company. They've got around sixty five hundred or more employees currently. Um, they've got you know brands like Top Shield and you know other key suppliers. Uh, the kind of the brands that they operate under. So while the tenant may be a certain, you know, type of material, building material, the operator itself um, is SRS and and uh, they're a pretty strong company, it looks like. Um, yeah. Obviously, they're private, so we don't have access to the uh, to their financials. Um, but, you know, a lot of a lot of places uh, look to be you know, a growing company based out of mckinney texas um and yeah so we'll leave it at that for now yeah and the location so so this one is located in lawton oklahoma i'm just zooming out of the map here for people who aren't familiar with with lawton as you know as i was before we started looking at this deal so lawton is right above wichita falls pretty close to the border of texas and it's you know relatively close to oklahoma city and not too far from the dallas fort worth area you know um as this is, you know, this is an industrial property, you know, we're looking at 60 miles from Oklahoma City, basically, right? And, you know, 120 miles from Dallas. So, you know, this, this is, you know, well located, it, Uh, uh, industrial, industrial area. Are you there, Winston? Yeah, I'm having I'm, a little, I'm a little slow. I think I'm here, um, but um, yeah. it's it's yeah. kind of like spotty He's access. Okay. Well, hey, look. Um, let me let me add something to that while we you know check check the internet connection here. Um, you know. Something to add is it does have a population, you know, of, of uh, according to 20 census 2020, it was 90,517. Uh, the population today uh, is estimated to be 90,140. Right? And um, what we've got is growth, you know, look, it looks about, you know, half a percentage point a year. Not great, uh, but it is growing, right? Um and so that's just something to keep in mind <clears throat> that, you know, as far as it's growing, the size of the city. So it's definitely not like a major, you know, area, but it, it is, you know, it's under 100,000. So the market's not great, I would say. Um, but I also think it's going to serve a much larger market than just Lawton itself with building supplies, right? So depending on you know, how close it is to, uh, you know, interstates and in other, you know, uh, uh, places for easy access to the interstate. So anyhow, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, 60 miles to Oklahoma. Like, so you can do easily do day trips to Oklahoma city, 120 miles. You can even do day trips down to Dallas. So, you know, two very large markets 
on, you know, that you can get there and back in, in a single day, which is important. Um, just kind of the surrounding areas, pull an industrial park right off, the, right off the highway here. Um, you know, it's a, a strategic location. Um, it's a standard, standard 20,000 square foot building. Um, I don't know. You, you have anything else you want to talk about with SRS or, or Lawton, Winston? Um, no, you know, I love that you, you, you noticed that it was kind of in the middle or hour to two hours from some major markets. Look, let's face it. Industrial, while it's the gym, you know, today, like everybody loves it from an investment standpoint, cities kind of hate it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people are trying to push industrial out of the city. So if you've got a good, you know, a good industrial site today, um, it's important. You know, it's so important because everybody needs material. Everyone needs industrial. Everyone needs those type of jobs. Uh, every city, rather. But no one wants it, right? Um, kind of the whole the whole NIMBY approach. But anyhow, I thought it was good. Oklahoma City, Dallas, you know, that's, that's good. And I know Dallas is growing like crazy. So... Yeah, that's it for sure. So uh, just a few things about the lease. Um, so this is, you know, so like I said, 20,000 square foot building on, on 1.4 acres. Um, this is a five year lease that's starting uh, re to restart here in a bit uh, this year. So five year lease with two five year terms. It's guaranteed by S this SRS distribution company, uh, as Winston says, a private company. Um, absolute triple net lease, no landlord responsibilities. Uh, this building was, is actually quite old. It was built in 1960, although it was completely renovated in 2017. Um, I'd like to see, you know, the details of that renovation, ex exactly what they did, but it's been renovated very recently. Um, they're do they're, they're paying 115,000, uh, NOI right now. And that's, and they're asking a seven cap on the price. So it's, you know, it's priced at one point, it's just over 1.6 million, um, as it is right now. And those and the rent bumps are uh, ten percent every five years. So we've discussed rent bumps uh, quite a bit, you know, on these on these discussions. Uh, ten percent every five years is is pretty standard. Um, not as good as two percent a year, but it's not not too bad. So you know. Um, acquisition and operating cash flows we just talked about. Because this is such a short-term lease, um, it makes it a little bit, not, not, it doesn't make it harder, but you get hit harder with fees, uh, basically. If you underwrite a deal for year five versus you know 10 or 15 years or whatever, the fees, the fees on the acquisition side and on the disposition side are going to hurt you more because they, they take up a larger percentage of your total return over the, the whole period, right? So we're gonna we're looking at this on a five-year horizon because that's the initial contract. Um, and then we're gonna look at two scenarios at year five, which is one they renew, and two, um, you're gonna retain it. So if they renew, the NOI at that time will be 126,000. Um, I'm using an exit cap rate of 7.25, that's five basis points a year uh increase because the building is older and you know it's different it's it's uh the, uh, the first of two options rather than uh, a new lease with two options on the end um five percent selling fees uh if we assume a new tenant comes in i mean you'd have to assume it would be a, a very similar tenant right um i'm, I'm putting a, quite a low cost for adaptive reuse i put ten dollars a square foot on a twenty thousand square foot building um, and then I would assume the same exit cap rate that you're going in at now because the building is going to be, you know, slightly better shape with a brand new lease on it. Um, is there anything, anything there you disagree with Winston? No, I think it looks good. Okay. So in this scenario, basically, um, if they, if they stay and you dispose, you're looking at about 1.65 million disposition net proceeds. And if you retain it because of those retaining costs, you're down around 4.7, which, you know, a probability weighted average, you're in that 1.64 million range. Um, you know, what they're asking is, you know, 1.64, <laughs> that's funny, almost exactly, uh, 
you know, you're going in for almost exactly what you'd be expecting to get out five years later. So basically you're just collecting rent um, for five years. So, you know, how does that look from an analysis perspective? Um, here's your five years of cash flows, right? So I'm assuming you're 50% leverage on a, on a seven and a half percent loan. You can, right, get rid of the leverage and just see what it looks like unlevered. Um, it's a 6.4% IRR, uh, unlevered, and then whatever leverage you want to put on that, that'll, that'll change those, right? So in this case, you have negative leverage because the leverage is more expensive than the unlevered IRR. So if you were went 50% debt and 50% uh, cash, you only have a levered IRR of about 5.2%. So it's not, you know, not the best return um, from a cash flow perspective. I mean, we've, we've seen some stuff. We've been looking at stuff some of these weeks that that cash flows better than this. Um, you know, what do you think about that, Winston, uh, for this tenant, this building? I can't hear you, man. Are you, are you muted? Yes, I was. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, one question I had, and I should probably know this, is do we take into account on that sale price, are we including the equity? So are we are we including the equity that, we, that has been built up over that five-year period from the loan payoff? What do you mean, the, the equity that's been built up? Um, Going back to uh, the price that we'll get in five years, yeah. Are you are you taking into account that we've paid down that loan over? Yeah, so I'm taking into account. Basically, here here's how this calculated, right? So, um, as the rents increase every year, the NOI increases increases every year. When we get to disposition, the NOI is larger than it was at that time. So when we cap that that new NOI, which is larger than the going in NOI. Um, that will make the exit uh, price higher, right? But then we're still gonna hit with the fees, uh, you know, brokerage fee, whatever, on the on the outs on the on the back end. And since this is only a five year lease, what we're what we're coming out with on the back end is only come even though the building is worth more on the back end because the NOI is higher. What we're coming out with net is pretty comparable to what we're going in with on the front end, simply because we're getting feed to death because we're only holding it for five years. Yeah. And so something I just wanted to add to that is, um, you know, if, if you're if you've taken out a bank loan and you've been paying down the bank loan, there's a chance that you have built up equity in that in that number. Right. So when you go to pay off the bank loan, you're going to have more than what you would have when you bought it today. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I just that's all. Yeah. That's all included in the in the calculation and in the leveraged calculation. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. So that that was a question. Um, no, I mean nothing really to add. You know. You know. I would say, look, it's really hard today. I mean, when you have negative leverage, to buy something with leverage, right? I mean, it really, really, really hurts. You know. Um, but but that doesn't. There's the there's the saying that says, um, what does it say? It says you're 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 dating you're dating the interest rate, but you're marrying the property, right? Like that's I think that's how the saying goes. Somebody correct I like that. Me. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I don't know if that's how, but if you just made that up right now, I like that a lot. I did, and I, I took that from someone, but um, I don't use it as much as I as I should. But my, the point is, is that I like the property. I like the tenant. I like its use. It's a 20,000 square foot, pretty standard uh, industrial user. Personally, I'm a big fan of industrial. I'm excited that we're talking about this, and I hope that we talk about it more. So, you know, looking at the numbers as we're putting it here and everybody's different, no, it doesn't. It's not very sexy, right? But um, if you pay it all cash... How does it look um, if it when they renew, I, you know, I think they're going to renew. It looks like online that they have uh, some sort of expansion project on the on the horizon for this location for 2023. So, you know, if the tenant's going to invest significant amounts of money um, for that, then I 
you know, you can only assume they're going to stay longer. But even if they don't, um, you know, it's still a good property in an industrial park. So, I, I mean, I, I agree yeah. with you know, everything you just said, um, even though it doesn't look super sexy. I mean, we can look at, at comps right now, right? Um, so, you know, just to put things. So we, we looked at the intrinsic cash flows there. Um, up top, and you know, we talk about whether that's worth it or not for you. But just in terms of sales comps, um, industrial, you know, single tenant net lease industrials in the last six months, you can see that you know this is so. So this first graph, let me just explain what these are. So this first graph from the top is just the distribution of of sales of of sales comps in the last six months. These are all single tenant net lease industrial property. Eight properties sold between five seven five and six seven five properties sold in the six seven five and seven seven five range, and a couple properties sold up higher, right? So this property would be right here in the middle. So it's actually a little bit cheaper than uh, you know a lot of properties that have been on the market. If you look at this property on a price per square foot and an NOI per square foot basis, um, you can see that the price per square foot of these industrial single tenant at least industrial properties is uh, in this you know. 70 let's say 75 to 200 range basically this so in the middle here this this blue area is your 25 to 75 percentile area so you can say this is where the majority of the sales are happening so the majority of the sales are happening between 75 and 200 dollars a square foot and on the noi side they're happening between you know five and twelve dollars a square foot well this property is um i believe it's 75 a square foot the price it's not coming up as a number but i think it's 75 sorry 82 82 per square foot the price and the noi is uh 5.75 per square foot right so you know it's a it's it's a pretty good property um you know price wise it's it's right in the middle range of, of where the rest of these have been have been selling and then you know if you look at the remaining term versus closing cap rates it's you know dead on the the the, the line even though there's a lot of variance around this line it's dead on the trend line of these single tenant net lease uh industrial comps so the market says that, you know, this is an, a, a pretty decent deal. Um, the only question would be going back is, you know, as Winston said, if you want to, if you want to date these interest rates or not, um, you know, to get those returns that we were looking at up above. Yeah. And something else to point out is, <clears throat> you know, is, is markets change and, um, you know, there's a lot of talk of more onshoring, you know, companies coming back into the U.S. and needing more space. Um, I think we were at like $6 a square foot <clears throat> um, on the NOI there. I, I might be off by a buck or two, but um, what was that yeah. a per square foot? Five, seven, five, seven, five NOI per square foot. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. One thing, if we, if we took this further, that, that's the big question we would have is, well, what is industrial warehouse space going for in Lawton, Oklahoma, within a you know ten mile radius? Uh, to really understand, you know, are they are they paying under market rent? So if they do move out in five years or ten years, do we think we're going to even do we think we're going to be able to rent it for even higher? So more to it than just this, folks. But but um, you know, I like it, Tyler. I'm a fan. I, I I really am. I don't know if I buy it at a seven cap. Uh, leveraged, you know, I, I don't know that, um, but I like it and I think it warrants far more investigation. Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, hundred percent. I think it's, I think it's a good property, good tenant. Um, it probably sells if we're setting a gambling line in that, in those low, in that low seven range. Um, you know, it, it seems fairly priced in that seven to 7.5 range. Uh, you know, for the right buyer who maybe buys all cash or, or, you know, puts a minimum amount of leverage on it could be a good deal. Yeah. You know, the, I would say one drawback is like, as, as um, housing slows, right. With the interest rates, you know, how will that impact that business? Right. I mean, will, will that be a negative impact for, I mean, it will be a negative impact. Um, but does it just, mean they're not having rocket fuel poured on them or are they really really impacted um if they're going to expand this the space and make it larger or 
do a more outdoor storage? Are they going to have to downsize any? So are they going to try to renegotiate in five years and, and ask for, you know, 16,000 square feet instead of the, you know, the full 20. So that's a question. And, you know, we've got to do a little bit deeper dive and uh, look at trends a little bit more, but also go, you know, go with trends and data uh, and then go with the local market situation. So that it's a little bit tough to dive in on that today, but uh, I, I like the, I like the, I like the tenant. I like its location uh, close to Dallas and Oklahoma city. Um, I like its location, its proximity to a large, inter, you know, to an interstate. I forgot the name of the interstate that it was on. Um, I like it. I like it. I just don't like interest rates where they are right now. Uh, personally. Yeah. We run into that every week. <laughs> I like, I, I like the property. I like the tenant. I don't like, I don't like paying seven and a half percent for, <laughs> for a loan, but yeah. But, you know, as, as I said, you know, it's not permanent. You can always refi. You can always do other different, you know, other things. Um, if you have money and you want to place it and you believe in industrial in uh, the U S if you think that's going to stay strong, a lot of people think uh, industrial in the U S is going to be a strong asset class, <clears throat> you know, uh, in the foreseeable future. Look, there's been a lot of investment in million square foot uh, mega warehouses for Amazon and, and, and other data centers. There hasn't been that much investment in kind of that smaller flex space, smaller warehouse space. So, you know, I like it, but I don't I don't know that market's um, specifics. And I just want to dive deeper in it. That's all. Yep. hundred percent. All right. Well, one day we're going to have to get in a big debate here, Tyler, because we can't we can't always agree with each other. All right. I'll, we'll 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 find a property. What what property type do you hate? We'll look at that. We'll look at that next week. I don't know. We'll have, I'll have to think. I don't hate any property types. I don't hate. Um, I think multifamily is tough right now. Um, that's that's I think it's tough, but I, I don't hate multifamily at all. Um, well, look, I think it's good. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to do uh, an industrial property. I think we should do more of that on here and, and kind of dive in and, and look at more data. You know, it's an exciting asset class. There are, you know, it's important for folks to know that single tenant net lease isn't just, you know, retail or medical, right? I mean, there's, it's, there's, it's a much larger um, tenant base than just, you know, your, your Walgreens or your urgent cares, right? So, or Wendy's for that matter. So good stuff, man. Do you have anything else? Nope. I think that's it for, for SRS. All right. Well, Hey, thanks Tyler. Um, I'll right. talk to you soon and, and thanks everybody. If you have any questions or want to talk more about, uh, SRS, this, this particular, um, offering or, uh, just talk real estate in general, give us a con give us a shout. Shoot us an email. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Bye.